Hi guys, John here. And Jack. Welcome back to another super windy day here at the island. Welcome back guys. In the previous episode, we were putting the panels on this roof behind us and that was the last of our three roofs. So we now have 62 panels collecting sunlight for us. But this wouldn't be an off-grid system without the inverters and the battery. And that's what we're gonna be having a look at today. All right, so down at the boathouse there, we've got uh, two strings of 10 panels. So there's 20 panels there. On the house, there are two strings of 14 panels. So there's 28 panels there. And on top of the workshop, we've also got another string of 14 panels. So all in all, we've got 62 panels divided up into three strings of 14 and two strings of 10. Now, welcome into our little, uh, what would we call this, Jack? Uh, um, Our technical shed. Yeah, just it's just a it's just a shed full of tech, really. Nice and warm today. Yep. Ooh. All right. So where do we get started? Let's start with uh, where all the cables uh, come from the solar panels. Let's just go in order, I think. Yeah. All right. Well, you got the solar panels over that way. Yep. And uh, we actually had to do a fair bit of digging over the yard and all the way down through the forest there. Yeah. And uh, of course, all the conduit and all that sort of stuff and uh, they actually all come through here and end up in the combiner box and that was the key. All right, so what we've got here is um, pretty much the heart of the safety system and in any um, solar panel system, anything to do with electricity, uh, it's the fusing, it's the um, earthing, it's the surge protectors and all that kind of stuff, which is a bigger must. It's all got to come first. All right, so now that we've got the, the electrons coming from our solar panels, they are coming in. Uh, we've got minus DC and we've got plus DC here. And there's just a bit of room between those in this combiner box, which is pretty neat and tidy. Now, they are combined in the following manner, because if you do remember, we have the two um, strings of 10 panels, and then we also have three strings of 14 panels. Now the two strings of 10 panels down on the boat shed are combined and they come up into, into uh, one of the inputs here. The two strings of 14 panels on the house come up to another input. And then the last 14 comes up from the workshop and that comes up on itself here. So we're combining three strings of 14 and two strings of 10. And after that, our little electrons uh, come down through these fuses and they get sent out to our inverter. Now, they come out to the inverter and they get plugged in here. And this is actually where we've got the uh, different uh, strings. We've got the strings from the house, the strings from the workshop, and then the final strings from the boat shed coming in here. So we have, uh, we're utilizing three of the MPPTs here. Now that we've got the power coming in from the solar panels, um, we're actually distributing it um, and have the possibility of distributing it either to the house where we're using it or to the grid or to our battery system here. And the magical thing here is that the inverter will do all that thinking for you. You don't have to do anything. You just use your electricity as normal and you set up the programming and voila. Yeah, so the inverters are really smart nowadays and uh, actually quite neat piece of kit. Yep. Uh, however, I personally think that this... This is pretty cool. This is pretty cool as well. Now, I, I almost have to go vertical to fit this, but this is a massive stack. How high is it, do we think? Uh, it's like, um, we've got 1,100 mil high, and we've got about 600 wide, and it's around about 750 deep. Yeah, so what's that for all the Americans? Like 25 hamburgers high or something? Something like that. Yeah. This right here is actually 60, roughly. It's actually 61 kilowatt hours. Yeah, 61 kilowatt hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries, which is interesting because do you know something else that's got 60 kilowatt hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries? A standard range Tesla Model 3. Yep. So basically, we've got a full electric car just kind of sitting here yep. on the floor. Okay, so our battery's at 40% here, and uh, we're currently using just under one kilowatt. It's, uh, we're using a couple of kilowatts to the house here, but we're actually also using power directly from the solar panels here. So the house is using just under two kilowatts, and it's grabbing some power from the solar panels and some power from the battery. Now, at times, 
Uh, it's quite a cloudy day today, so we're only doing 1.3 uh, kilowatts at the mount at the moment, down from the cloud. Uh, fr sorry, from the sky. Uh, so we're not producing a lot. And um, when the house uses too much, then it's going to grab it from the battery. And if the battery runs out, it's simply going to switch back to grid power. Exactly. However, we don't need to use grid power. We haven't had to since April because of the batteries. Yeah. So this system has been completely off grid. Uh, since April, yeah. Uh, I think you did a test when the electrician swung by and put the grid power on and made sure everything that was, was correct. That uh, was—he was doing his bits and pieces yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, you still have to have everything professionally done by an electrician here in Sweden. But exactly. when they came around, we did do a grid test, and I think we had to pay for two kilowatt hours that time. Oh no, 0.8 of a kilowatt oh, point eight. hour. Oh, that was yeah. a bummer, wasn't it? <laughs> God, I hate yeah, paying exactly. for 0.8 of a kilowatt hour. All right. So the greatest thing with this system is that we're actually off grid for a larger part of the year. And um, when it comes to the winter and the darker months, when there just isn't a lot of light, that's when the batteries really come into play um, and work so well with the grid. During the winter time, uh, there's a large number of people who need a lot of electricity up here in the Northern Hemisphere and Europe. And that has meant that with the changes in the electricity market, the prices have gone through the roof. Now, a battery system which is grid tied also gives you the ability to charge the batteries at night time when the price is generally cheaper. And then during the day, this programs to utilize the power that's sitting in the batteries down at the house. And that way you're saving a fair bit of money. Now, we should also say that if the pricing differences are very extreme, so very high during the day when everyone's using heaps and very low during the night time, uh, when no one's using power pretty much that means that you can buy low and sell high just like a stock That's right. There is that arbitrage um, uh, Potential in a system like this and we've actually done some calculations and for our own part because we had um, Really good pricing on this equipment and we had the ability to buy when it's super cheap at night and sell when it can be super expensive then there actually is uh, the potential to earn a little bit of money on that, in particular if we're not here. So yes. if we're just not at the property um, and not using a lot of electricity, yeah. um, then then you can actually get that swing if you want to catch it. Because so, when we're here, it's actually just more efficient to use the power exactly. yourself. Because yeah. otherwise you might risk running the batteries too low and having to charge when it's suboptimal. Exactly. So there's a lot of thinking to do in that case if you are thinking about sort of earning money off it or whatever you'd like to say. There's a lot of discussions out there. Uh, we're not actually in it for that, but of course it's a small um, part of the setup anyway. As you guys may have noticed, we've actually not got one inverter, we've got two. Yeah. And why is that? The reason behind that is because this property uses a fair bit of electricity. Um, we have a range of different things which uh, normal houses wouldn't have. For example, we have combustion toilets out here on the island and they use a fair bit of power uh, during the day. Now, if you combine all of these peaks um, of power usage, this inverter just won't do it for us. So we actually need to use two um, to be able to output uh, the AC current as much as we need. But more importantly, with all of the panels we've got on all the roofs, uh, we have a total of 29,000 watts up on the roof, which means that we can get 29 kilowatts an hour. But that's the potential anyway. This inverter is only good for 12 kilowatts an hour, so 12,000 watts. Now, if you do the math on that, you've really got to get another one in there. So we've got to have two times 12, which is 24,000 watts of potential. And earlier this summer, we actually got a really good day where we saw the system peak out that poor inverter. Oh, yeah. uh, it was working it its was, ass off. It, it was early, so yeah. So it's yeah, gonna be nice exactly. to get that one hooked up as well. It's right gonna now, be really good. It isn't. Alrighty, so the big burning question is, what did this cost? Yes, because there's quite a lot of stuff there. There's 62 panels, 61 kilowatt hours of batteries, and two inverters. A bunch of cabling. panels, a whole heap, yeah, a lot of cabling. A lot of cabling. Um, you've got all the clips, you've got rails. Uh, Mounting we've got, brackets. Yeah, and then we've also got the electricians, all that kind of stuff. Um, so pretty much like a baseline cost for this system. Um, if you put it this way, wherever in the world you're watching, if you just went out and bought it, um, it'd be about, sort of about 30, 32,000 
uh, US dollars. And of course, you're gonna have some local taxes, sort of depending upon where you live. Um, yeah. that would be applied to that. Yeah, of course. I mean, 32, that's that's your cost price and then you've got to add all your fun government stuff on top of that. Yeah, yeah, you've got to give your money away somewhere, don't you? Yeah. Alrighty, so that's the entire story, I'd say, of our solar panel build out here on the island. And uh, it's going to keep us happy, hopefully, for many, many uh, decades to come. And uh, be powering all of our super cool things that we've got coming up. If you've missed the other videos, we've got one part where we drove everything over here on the airboat. We've got one part drilling holes in the roof, one part putting the panels up there, and then, well, this final one explaining all the fun stuff, exactly. the batteries. So yeah. if you haven't, go check those out. And if we've missed anything, write us a comment. We try and answer absolutely everything. And thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to both Jack and I. And uh, we hope you enjoy it. Like, subscribe, and all the other stuff. Have an awesome day. See you later. Goodbye.